Let's take a look at this problem taken from the 2017 Indian National Mathematical Olympiad. It says, let n that is greater or equal to 1 to be an integer and consider the sum summing um, from k equals 0 all the way to infinity of n choose 2k times 2 to the n minus 2k times 3 to the k. Let this sum to be x, let this be the sum, then we have to show that 2 is minus 1, 2x, 2 is plus 1, form the size of a triangle whose area and in radius are also integers. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. This is quite a complicated problem because well, there are many things that we have to take care of. The first one is the, we have to analyze the sum, this one. We can see that by expanding it's quite complicated, so we have to see whether we can rewrite x into a more concise form. The second thing is, after analyzing the sum, we still have to make use of the 2 ways minus 1 and the, and the other expressions, those three terms, to find the area and in radius and also take care of the fact that they are integers. So it can be it's quite tedious and uh, Let's do it bit by bit. The first part is that we know that x is this kind of sum, and at the first, the first thing that came to my mind when I see this kind of um, summation is the sum of binomial coefficients, something of the form, say n choose k times two to the k. So this thing is actually or I should say, uh, not 2, but say uh, x, x to the k. This is actually uh, rewritten re as this term, this form, n choose 1, x to the, x to the 1 times 1 to the n minus 1, and so on. This is in fact the expanded form of the of the power one plus x to the power n, and we obtain this expanded form by the binomial theorem. This is very close to our summation on x, but we have to bear in mind that. Within the binomial coefficient, this is quite different. We're summing over n choose 2k, not n choose k. And the power, the powers after the binomial coefficients are 2 to the n minus 2k and 3 to the k, but not something to the power 2k. So we have to take care of that as well. So now let's see whether we can rewrite the 3 to the k in the power of, in the something to the power 2k. And that's simple because it's simply root 3, square root of 3 to the power 2k. So now let's rewrite it, and it will look like this. So we're getting closer to the complete, the complete form, um, completely expanded through binomial theorem. The only thing that we need to take care of now is the 2k. So the way to handle this is to consider two sums. The first one is n choose 0 times 2 to the, say 2 to the n, and then square root of 3 to the power 0, and then n choose 1, 2 to the n minus 1, root 3 to the 1, n choose 2, 2 to the n minus 2, root 3 to the 2, and so on. And the second sum we consider is almost the same.
But if we are if the term consists of n choose an odd number, that binomial coefficient, this part, this component, this entry, is an odd number, then we get the minus sign to this term and plus for the others. Now in fact these two these two sums can also be written into a kind of a con into a closed form, which is two plus root three to the power n for the first one, and the other one is actually two minus root three to the n. So by adding them together, these things will cancel out. The odd powers of square root of three will cancel out, and what's left are just the even powers of square root of three, and the binomial coefficients will be n choose two k. So we add them up and divide it by two, and that will equal to n choose zero. 2 to the n plus n choose 2, 2 to the n minus 2 times root 3 whole square, which is 3 actually, and so on. And that is exactly our sum. So we know that x is actually equal to this. Which is much more good looking. And a bunch of binomial coefficients. So that's the first part. Now let's analyze the second part. Is that those three ter those three expressions, two is minus one, two is two is plus one, form the size of a triangle with area in in radius to be both integers. So let's take a look at the expression of the area and the in radius. That's the first part. And here comes the second part, is that when we have only have the three only have the three sides of a triangle, and we want to find the area. I would immediately go for the Heron's formula, which is to first find the semi perimeter Okay, some adding adding m up and divided by two, which is three x. Then the area is the square root of the product of this s times this s semi perimeter minus each side, each of the three sides. So four term, four things multiplying together, and we take square root. And so it will become 3x squared times x squared minus 1. Of course, we can we take out the x to make things simpler. This is the area. Apart from, taking, apart from looking at the area, we also try to find the in radius. We have to try to express in radius in terms of x. So the only thing that I can I can quickly relate with the in radius is the it's actually the area because there are actually many formulas for areas of a triangle. Say you have um Heron's formula we've used just now, uh, base times height over two or a half of a b sine c and then the, there's there are other two formulas relating with um radius of the in circle and the circumcircle and i'm going to use that for the radius of the in circle which is which means the in radius so area of triangle equals sr where s is again the semi perimeter and r is the in radius so we know that area is x times times x squared minus 1 and that equals to 3x times r so we divide 
the, move the three x to the left hand side and we have r equals this expression it's quite easy to get lost by um, doing so much calculations we have to uh, keep reminding ourselves our final goal is that we have to show that given this x given this x we have to show that this expression and this expression are both integers so from the expression we've got I will try to prove that this is an integer which means x three r uh, x squared minus one over three is a square number, or in other words, I can rewrite x squared equals three r squared plus one. As in, if I go and square this expression, and then minus one over three, it will still be it will still become a perfect square. It's still a perfect square. So I'm going to do this. And in fact, if I can achieve this, then we know that 3 times x squared minus 1, 3 times x squared minus 1 is simply 3r. Well, actually, uh, should be... Uh, 9r squared because we know that it's 3 times 3r three squared and so it's 9r squared and so area would then be 3xr okay also an integer so it would suffice for us to show that r is an integer So now let's do this. So consider x squared minus 1 over 3. It will become x squared. So x squared becomes 2 times root 3 whole squared to the power n plus 2 minus root 3 whole squared to the power n over 4. Simplify. Ah, we also have a plus 2 at the top. over 4. Then x squared minus 1 will become this thing. It looks very much alike, but the plus 2 now becomes minus 2. Fortunately, we can still make it perfect square, which is this. Now the question is whether this is whether this will still become a perfect square after divided by 3. This may seem to be a thing that's very hard to prove but we can proceed as follows. So notice that when we expand this kind of powers 2 plus root 3 to the power n it would end up looking like something of the in the form a plus b square root 3 where a and b are both natural numbers and at the same time the other part will be a minus b root 3 because it's simply um, um, a conjugate of 2 plus root 3 then we minus them and divide by 2 we would have b root 3 and whole squared and we square it which is 3b squared and we're done so to write this formally we can say let 2 plus root 3 to the n equals a plus b root 3 some natural numbers a and b then we can say this is a minus b root 3 
and therefore x squared minus 1 equals to 2b root 3 over 2 whole squared and so x squared minus 1 over 3 is b squared okay exactly what we are what we're looking for and we're done so this completes our proof of course we can add some more words at the end something like therefore in radius which is this expression is b it's a natural number and so area equals is also an integer also a natural number because x itself is a natural number and yes that will complete the proof i hope you enjoyed the video feel free to suggest any alternatives in the comments if you like my videos make sure to subscribe to my channel right now thank you for your support see you next time